We're talking about the accusative in this chapter. So, did you notice anything different from what you would have expected when watching the film scene? Well, you might have heard some unusual endings, such as "keinen Käse," "einen Kaffee," or "seinen Job." Now, what do these forms have in common? First of all, these nouns "Käse" or "Kaffee." Are all at the receiving end of the action that takes place. Somebody eats them, has them, sees them, makes them, and so on. As the action is directly aimed at them, we call them the direct objects. Secondly, they're all masculine singular nouns, as the accusative only shows up with them. Okay, now let's do a more detailed explanation of the accusative case. You need to build up the concept of what the accusative is. And why it's significant in German. Let's take the nouns dog, cat, and the verb chase, or the nouns father, child, and the verb kiss. How do we know whether the dog is chasing the cat, or the other way round, or whether the father is kissing the child, or vice versa? Well, in English. We use word order alone for clarification. So, in a normal sentence, the doer or subject comes first, then the action, the verb, and then the object of the action. In grammatical terms, the cat is the direct object of the verb chasing. So, in the sentence, the dog is chasing the cat, we know immediately that the cat is at the receiving end of the action. And in the sentence, the father is kissing the child. We know that it is the child the kissing is directed to. The child is the direct object of the verb kissing. In German, we put the direct object of an action into what we call the accusative case. As I've already pointed out, the accusative case only shows up with masculine singular nouns. And if you were to ask me why, well, I'd have to say we don't really know. Languages simply change over time. English has largely dropped the accusative case. You can still see it in the personal pronouns me, him, her, us, them. We say, I see him, not I see he. We say, I know her. You are asking us. It's very possible that German, like English, might eventually drop this form. But for now, to speak and write normal German, we have to learn it. It's very simple, though. All we have to do to indicate that a noun is the direct object of a verb is to put an n ending onto the article that precedes it. But remember, this only needs to be done if it's a masculine singular noun. The article preceding a feminine neuter or plural noun is unchanged. So, in our example, it would be der Hund. Jagt die Katze, but die Katze jagt den Hund. And der Vater küsst das Kind, but das Kind küsst den Vater. In both sentences, der has changed to den. This shows that Hund has become the object of the verb jagt, and Vater has become the object of the verb küsst. It's the same with ein, mein, kein, and so on. So we say, meine Katze jagt meinen Hund, or das Kind küsst seinen Vater, or as we saw in Take One, ich esse keinen Käse. As you can see, ein, mein, and kein already have an n at the end. So they now get an en ending to make the ending pronounceable. You can't say ein or mein. You have to say einen, meinen, so that it doesn't sound like a stutter. If the person or thing on the receiving end of the action is a feminine or neuter noun, the article doesn't change. So you say mein Hund jagt meine Katze, or der Vater küsst sein Kind. There are two more things you have to know about the accusative. First of all, when we replace the direct object noun with a personal pronoun, 
that pronoun also has a special accusative form. So it's not ich küsse du, but ich küsse dich. Let's take the verb sehen to see and look at all the other pronoun forms. Ich sehe mich, I see me. Ich sehe dich, I see you. Ich sehe sie, that's the polite form, I see you. Ich sehe ihn, I see him. Ich sehe sie, I see her. Ich sehe es, I see it. Ich sehe uns, I see us. I see you. Euch is the plural form of the familiar dich. We might jokingly translate it as yous or you guys. Ich sehe sie, that's the polite form, I see you. The form is the same for both singular and plural. Ich sehe sie, I see them. OK, one more thing. All German prepositions are followed by a case. Prepositions are the little words like in, on, around, through, or at. They're called prepositions, prepositions, because they're positioned before a noun or a pronoun. In the house, around the corner. I look at her. There are some prepositions which are always followed by the accusative case. You don't have to find the verb to see if the noun or pronoun is in the accusative case. After one of these prepositions, then the article or pronoun must be in the accusative form. Again, only the masculine singular nouns that come after these prepositions are affected by adding the N ending to the article. The prepositions always followed by the accusative case are durch, through, ich fahre durch den Wald, I drive through the forest. Ohne, without. Wir gehen ohne den Vater. We go without the father. Gegen, against. Sie sind gegen den Krieg. They're against the war. Bis, until. Bis nächsten Montag. Until next Monday. Um, around. Sie geht um den Tisch. She goes around the table. Für, for, er macht das für seinen Sohn. He does that for his son. You could memorize them as dog boof. Well, there is one more little thing. The question word wer, who, changes to. So we, if we ask about who is on the receiving end of the action, as in who do you see, or who are you kissing, the question word is not wer, but wen, with the usual accusative n ending. You can use this in English too. You say in formal speech, whom do you see? Whom are you kissing? You is the subject, because you're doing the kissing. Who's at the receiving end of this action? Well, we don't know, so we're asking, who? Or whom? Your great-grandparents would probably have used this form as a matter of course. It's dying out, though. You probably don't use whom at all. You can see how dynamic language is. In German, however, wen is alive and well. So we ask, wen siehst du? Whom do you see? Or more normally, who do you see? Wen küsst du? Whom do you kiss? Or more normally, who do you kiss? However, if we ask about a thing, the question word remains was, what. Was kaufst du? What do you buy? Was isst du? What do you eat? Well, I think that's enough information for the time being. Have a look at the written version of our video scene again, and you'll be able to recognize many examples of accusative forms. If you want to see for yourself how easy it is to use the accusative case, do some of the exercises in this module.